welcome back to my channel. I hope that you had a fabulous week and that you tried some really nice wines. It's been far too cold in London lately, but still I found myself craving some really nice white wines. And I know that the rules are, you know, in the winter you have red wine, in the summer you have white wine. When you're celebrating, you need to crack open a bottle of champagne. When you have uh, seafood or fish, you need to have white wine. If you are eating red meat, only red wine is the option. But you know, enough with the rules, right? Life does not work like that, does it? There are some fabulously rich and textured white wines that would really blow your mind away with how beautiful they are and how gorgeously they pair with food. Well, because this is not the first time I'm shooting this video today, don't ask. My first wine is already open. Our first wine for today is a Riesling, one of my absolute favorite grapes, and it comes from Alsace, one of the most beautiful winemaking regions. This is made by Domaine Schlumberze, one of the finest winemaking estates in the region. I really like the very unique and elegant shape of the bottle, a shape that is very common in Alsace and Germany, maybe Austria. It makes such a great gift. I really love details. So let me show you that. The cork oops, is sealed with a little bit of beeswax. Can you see it? <laughs> ah, Riesling. It's definitely one of my most favorite white wine grapes or even grapes in general. It is such a noble variety that it allows the winemaker, the viticulturist, to almost use it as a white canvas but it's also very distinctive as well. Rieslings from Alsace are known to be very perfumed, very elegant and really, really dynamic. This is certainly no exception. There are just so many aromas jumping out of the glass, it's insane. First off, we've got this ripe lime, waxed lemon type of character, some lemon peel, a white pepper, some white spices, definitely ginger, a touch of honey. I really like the peppery note. But what makes Riesling very distinctive is this light smokiness, almost like a kerosene type of hint. And this wine is from 2014, right? So it's not your typical young, careless type of white wine. <sighs> the savory character of the smoke is really appetizing. Let's give it a try. That's what I'm talking about. Riesling on the mouth, it's so mouth-watering, so fresh. You feel like there's a wave of freshness, a wave of brightness, I would say, coating your whole mouth. These wonderful aromas of waxed lime and lemon are really persisting on the mouth, but again, you have this wonderful smoky character, this gingery white pepper notes, making the wine really rich, really textured. You also get a little bit of bee wax. There is certainly a lot of stony, stilly aromas. Try to think how a stone uh, smells like when it's under the sun for quite a while. You know, guys, I love Riesling so much that I actually did my thesis on it. Mwah! Riesling from Alsace was our winter white wine number one. Our next wine for today is a Chardonnay from South Africa, from one of the most well-known estates in Stellenbosch, Mierlust. Fun fact, Mierlust means the pleasure of being next to the sea because the estate lies just five kilometers off Falls Bay. I really like the fact that it comes in a screw cup, so if I don't finish the bottle, I can just put it back and into the fridge. My first thought was, whoa, this is really polished. As with the Riesling, the citrus character is very pronounced, but in a slightly different way. Over here we had the waxed lemon, the ripe lime, but in the Mierlust one, it smells almost like a lemon tart. Like, if you try it, you'll know exactly what I mean. Oh, this is such an attractive nose. So poly, so bright. Hints of oatmeal, marzipan really lovely vanilla aromas coming from the oak barrel aging the wine spent 11 months in oak mm. let's give it a try mm. 
the flavors in the mouth are very similar to the aromas on the nose, but in the mouth you get a little bonus. On the mouth you also get a little bit of pear next to the lemon tart. Again, we have these lovely marzipan oatmeal aromas. But what I really enjoyed in the mouth was this wonderful stony, steely type of character, very similar again to the Riesl here. The vanilla aromas are blended with this stony, steely character, making the wine even more complex. An illuminating freshness just covering my whole mouth right now very mouth-watering again but with a lovely weight to it really nice body it's very polished it's very silky on the mouth if you like chardonnay you are going to adore this wine have you tried any of these wines because if you have please let me know what you think our last wine for today is going to be capellania from marques de murieta Marques de Murieta is world famous for his extremely well-made Riojas, but not many people know that they also make a white Rioja. Well, they make less than 22,000 bottles, as you can see on the label. And the wine is made from old Viura vines coming from the Igai estate at an elevation of almost 500 meters above sea level. Whoa! So this white Rioja, as we said, is made from Viura grapes and it has spent 15 months in French oak barrels. Yet the barrel aromas do not overshadow the rest. They actually lift them up and this is what really shows top winemaking. You don't want to cover your aromas, you just want to elevate them. You want to make them a little bit more spicy, a little bit more round rather than cover them with just wood. The lovely vanilla aromas coming from the French oak barrels are beautifully, seamlessly almost blended with white flowers, so vibrant, most notably chamomile, I would say. Lovely bee wax aromas, a little bit of smokiness, wonderful sweet spices, and a touch of nutty character like almonds. I really cannot wait, I need to try this now. Mm -hmm. Amazing. <laughs> Wonderfully generous on the mouth as well. The mouthfeel is very silky. You feel the wine just gliding down your tongue in a very almost opulent way, really rich. You have this wonderful vanilla, sweet spices, chamomile, fennel, smoky aromas, really satisfying your palate. And now some food and wine matching inspiration. The Alsacian Riesling from Domaine Schlumberger goes very well with Thai cuisine dried with shrimps or soups, but also with smoked salmon. And it's really beautiful with some fresh goat cheese. Goat cheese and Riesling, I think it's one of the matches made in heaven. Now the Mille Chardonnay from South Africa goes beautifully with grilled fishes, white or even red meat because it has so much weight to it. Don't be afraid of the red meat with white wine, you will see how well it works. I would certainly try it with some chicken uh, marinated in lemon, some creamy sauces, mushrooms. It would go extremely well with pork, maybe with some pork medallions and uh, Alfredo Fettuccini, I think that would be beautiful. And last but certainly not least, the limited edition Capellania from Marques de Morieta in Spain. This one has such a broad spectrum of aromas and such a satisfying body that I would really like to try it with duck and some ginger sauce, maybe some stuffed chicken, and it would also work wonders with smoked or grilled salmon with whole grain mustard. So that is all for today for my winter white wines and I hope that you enjoyed the video and if you did please do give it a thumbs up. I hope that you got inspired to try some different white wines in these colder months. It is certainly really cold in London right now so these three beauties are going all the way up to my winter wine list. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again very very soon. Goodbye! Hey, so it's Friday night and for supper I'm having this lovely grilled chicken with this uh, macaroni but with no cheese. This is a sauce that I made from yogurt, lemon and a little bit of parsley. All these flavors, the lemon, the creaminess, the grilled smoky character goes so well with all these wines. I'm so impressed. Mm. Certainly really cold in... <laughs>